We're about to be so good at the distributive property. We're going to be like as good as Chuck Norris distributes roundhouse kicks in 90s action movies. 90s? Yeah. Yeah. 80s? I think both. I think both. Okay. Anyways. Did you know Chuck Norris does not do push-ups? He does earth downs. Fun fact. Learned this one from a student today. Chuck Norris once, once uppercutted a horse and made a giraffe. Glad one student um, knew who Chuck Norris was. Okay, um, we're gonna learn the distributive property and combining like terms. Um, first of all, we need to know what a term is. There's terms in an expression. So there's an expression and an equation, something like 3x plus 5 minus 9x squared. This is an expression, okay? Um, a, an equation would be something like 3x minus 5 equals 9. Okay, that is an equation because it has an equal sign. Okay, expressions and equations both have terms, and an equation is made up of usually two expressions. Okay, and so um, what a term is, a lot of times, like when I say 5x, it's representing multiplication, which is just repeated addition. That's x plus x plus x plus x plus x. Okay. Um, that's if it's positive. If the term is negative, um, that means repeated subtraction. So this would be uh, negative y minus y minus y minus y. How many x's did we have? It's adding x's five times. Well, this, this is not very fun to write, and this is not very fun to write, so we needed a way to write repeated subtraction, repeated addition, and that's by having a little um, a number out in front of the variable. Okay, so uh, this expression has four terms. Those terms are, let's take a look. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna do some color work here. So I'm just gonna leave this minimized. Those terms are 10x, negative 4x squared, six, and y. Four terms, okay? And the way that I identify them is usually it's the uh, groups of the the numbers, the variables, or the products of numbers and variables present in the expression. Usually they're separated by addition or subtraction here. Okay, so um, the first one is 10x. The second one is negative 4x squared. Make sure you include uh, the negative sign on that term. And then um, 6 is the third, and y is the fourth. Um, one of these is a constant. Constant is no matter the value of the variables will stay the same value. That is 6. So 6 is a constant. And um, the rest of these terms are not constant. They change. And those terms have coefficients. That is the number that is attached to the variable or the number of times that the um, variable or combinations of variables, variable, variables is being added or subtracted. So the coefficient here is 10. The coefficient on the x squared is negative 4. And the number <coughs> out in front of the y, when there's nothing written, is a 1, the number of y's we have. We have one y. Okay, so those are the coefficients of these terms. Super. So take a minute. I'm going to ask a couple of questions uh, about the, this expression. Um, and then you can try and answer them on your own. And then we'll go over the solutions. How many terms are in this uh, expression? And then I'm going to ask a couple other questions too. So how many terms are in the expression? You can pause it at any time if you want to try it. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. This expression is made up of six terms. One of them is a constant. That would be the three. Um, the second term is negative 2x. Um, what is the coefficient of the fourth term? The coefficient of the fourth term is, drum roll, you can pause it, negative 7, the coefficient of the fourth term. So what's the coefficient of the last term? 1. Um, you can go through and, and, and just trying to get you guys familiar with what's a coefficient, uh, what's a constant, those kind of terms refresh our memory. So um, expressions that have like terms can be simplified and you can add those terms together. Like terms are terms that contain the same variables with those variables having the 
same power. So let's go through and look at these examples. Um, uh, x and x squared, are these the same? Or are they like terms? The answer is no, they are not. Because although this is an x and this has an x, this is x to the second power. So they do not have the same power. So we cannot simplify this expression um, and add those two terms together. 4 and y, are these like terms? Do they have the same variables? No, this doesn't have a variable. And this does, so the answer is no. One's a constant, one is a variable, so we cannot add them together. This one down here, 6w minus 89w. Um, they both have a w, so that means we can add, so we can, these are like terms, because they both have a w to the first power, so we can add their coefficients. 6 minus 89, uh, that's going to be negative 83. W. Okay, so yes, this can be simplified. This expression, they are like terms, so it can be simplified. 8 plus 5, those are both constants, um, and so yes, these are like terms, so we can add them together, and we get the answer 13. How about this one? 7xy squared plus 3x squared y. Um, well, the answer here is no, and the reason it's no is because x is to the first power, and here it's to the second power. Uh, y is to the second power here and to the first power here. So although they appear to have the same variables, they actually don't because this is 7x times y times y. This is 3 times x times x times y. So they have a different combination of variables, or rather those variables have different powers when they're simplified. So we cannot add those together. Those are not like terms. Let's take a look at this one. Negative 42x squared y plus 95y x squared. Are these terms, by the way, there are only two terms here. It looks like a whole lot, but there's only two. Are these terms like terms? The answer is yes, they are, because they both have an x and a y, even though they're out of order. Remember the commutative property of, um, of multiplication says that 3 times 5 is equal to 5 times 3, right? And that um, x squared times y it's also equal to y times x squared. So we can change the order that the variables are in, um, and they're still the same. So which one do I write when I add their coefficients? What's negative, four min negative 42 minus 95? That's going to be positive 53. And then you can just pick one, and it'll be correct. But the, the way that we all write it is typically in alphabetical order. So 53 x squared y or y x squared is an acceptable answer. Let's keep rolling. All right, so now we're going to simplify by combining like terms. The way that we do that is this is a, an expression with four terms. So we're going to go through, and we're going to look for all the terms that are like. And we're going to group them together to simplify our expression. I'm going to go through with a color and underline the ones that are the same. Okay, This has a t, t squared, t, and a 1. There's our constant. There are no other constants. Um, let's start with the first term, 3t. Are there any other t's? Yes, there are. So we'll be able to combine like terms. Um, so we can write that as negative 10t. Um, let's go through in green. 4t squared. Are there any other t squareds? Nope. So that one just comes down. And are there any other constants? Nope. So um, typically you write these, this is kind of for a later lesson, I'm not going to be too much of a stickler on this, but typically you'll write your terms with the highest power first and then go down to the constant last. So this is t to the second, t to the first, and then your constant at the end. It's 4t squared minus 10t plus 1. Great, let's take a look at the next one. Oh boy. Um, zoom in. That's nice. That's real nice. Okay, starting with black. Going through. Um, the first term is a constant. It's 4. So I'm going to underline that in black, and I'm going to go in through and find all the other constants. 13 is 1. Okay, so now uh, there are no others, so now I can add these together. So I'll say, and remember, guys, these expressions are equal. A little faux pas on my part. 4 plus 13 gives us... 17. I'm going to go through in red. Negative 7t. So we're looking at anything that's got a t to the first power and only a t to the first power. Right there. 
So negative 7 plus 4 is negative 11t in green, 6x and negative 17x. 6 minus 17 is also negative 11, negative 11x. And coming through with purple, the last one, plus 8w squared. Um, yeah, that works. Now, typically, if I were to write this um, kind of the way that most mathematicians would, it would be the highest power first, 8w squared, uh, and then uh, in alphabetical order, minus 11t minus 11x plus 17. Okay? Super. Let's keep moving. Okay, I want you guys to try these on your own. Pause the video um, right now and then check your answer in just a minute and I'll work through them. Okay, because I'm going to start right here. 5n, go through for n's. In there, in there, 5 minus 17 is going to be negative 12n. Okay, negative 6 is a constant. There are no other constants, so that one comes down. Uh, 14x and negative x will be plus 13x. Fantastic. All right. All right, so that looks good to me. There's our answer. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the bottom one. X's, there's an X, there's an X, there's an X. Negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11, plus 4 is negative 7X. In red, green, there's only one constant, so that comes down. Blue, 28Y, there's only one Y. All right, we're, we're cruising. Almost done here. Um, the next thing that I'd like to go over is the distributive property. So the distributive property um, is just basically you, um, remember multiplication is just repeated addition. So basically what we're doing here, um, two times x plus y means x plus y plus x plus y. Just like 2 times 3 means 3 plus 3. It's two threes added together. So if we're doing this and we do x plus x, you'll notice we'll get 2x plus 2y. So you see this pattern when you, when you the, a quick trick here you may have learned for the distributive property is you can take that two and you can like distribute the multiplication to each of the coefficients present, okay? If we do that same thing down here, you would, you're gonna end up basically um, subtracting this five times, which is gonna be quite the, the doozy to write. So rather than do it that way, let's distribute multiplication by negative five. So we're gonna pass out multiplication by negative five. Negative five times six is negative 30 x, and negative five times negative eight, and negative five times a negative is gonna be positive 40 y. That's how the distributive property works. So how does that work with combining like terms? Well, let's take a peek. All right, so here we go. In green, let's do this one. Uh, and I'm gonna zoom in a smidge. Four times nine. So we're gonna distribute multiplication by four, like so. Four times nine is 36x. Four times negative six is minus 24y. Okay, these are not part of the distribution, so they come down by themselves. And now we can combine like terms. Going through in black, all the x's there and there, which will be equal to 37x. And here and here, negative 24 plus two is minus 22y. Okay, you can try this one on your own. I am actually gonna remove this x here. Try it as it is written, do your best. Um, and we're going to go over it in just a minute when you unpause the video. Okay, as you've now unpaused the video, 
I'm doing, I have two distributions here. We have a distribution multiplication by negative six that's going out to these two terms. And we have a distribution of three that is going out to these two terms. Negative six times 14 is negative 84 X. Negative six times negative seven is plus 42. Okay, this is not getting distributed. You're just subtracting three Y. This three is getting distributed. Three times y is plus three y, and three times negative eight is minus 24. Super. So let's draw kind of a line between these two questions. Um, try that again. Better. Okay, so let's go through and we'll find like terms. X is there and there are no other x's. So guess what? We come down and we just write negative 84x. Okay, in green, all the constants there and there. So what is 42 minus 24? Well, minus 20 would be 22, and 22 minus 4 is 18. So plus 18, and there are more positive than there are negative, so that's gonna be a positive answer. And then coming through with purple here, negative three and three. Now the metaphor I, I do for adding these numbers is good guys and bad guys. If three good guys fight three bad guys, they're gonna take each other out, um, and there will be zero y's left over. And so you can write zero y, but zero times y is just zero. So they're all gone. There are no y's remaining, and so you don't have to write it. Okay. That's the answer. My last comment here on the video is later in this class, you're gonna be seeing stuff that looks like this, okay? Um, and when you see uh, an expression being divided by a, a constant like this, this is the distributive property. You're dividing everything in the top by three, which means you actually have to kind of distribute the division. It is exactly the same problem um, you know, the, the skip, change, flip mentality. It is exactly the same problem as one-third times negative six plus 15z. Exactly the same problem. Okay, so you're really just saying, hey, what's negative six? What's negative six divided by three? That's negative two. Tack the variable on. What's 15 divided by three? That is five z. So there you have your um, simplified expression. So we are so you can kind of in math you can think of division and, and multiplication are kind of somewhat equivalent or just uh, reworked versions of themselves, um, and and same with kind of addition and subtraction. Okay, um, so this one would be have a, a decimal in it if you want to think about this one. This one we could write this as. Uh, in simplest form, you could write it as 7 halves minus 16y if you did the division, or 3.5 minus 16y. Okay, and that's it. Um, your first assignment is on my open math, uh, which is on the uh, it's on the, the directions for that will be on the class website. You can watch the video for how to log in. Um, and uh, yeah. So thanks for watching and more videos to come.